Welcome to our five on five. Please to welcome back Natalie Weber, public information officer for the Oregon Department of Forestry. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for being back in the building. It's Absolutely. pretty cool. Absolutely. So right now we're about two and a half weeks into fire season as of June 1st. You guys are Jackson and Josephine County. Uh, how are conditions like? You know, they're they're starting to heat up. We had some rain in May, and uh, I think a lot of people were, you know, excited about that. They got the last of their burning in, but we started fire season on June 1st, and that means no more burning. We're seeing a no. lot of that still. It's completely okay. prohibited. We're seeing a lot of that, and the temperatures are continuing to heat up, so it's, it's a big concern, and, you know, it's going to continue to heat up, and we're just, you know, taking it one step at a time. Okay, and what is the fire danger level uh, right now? So right now we're in low. We're taking a look at uh, potentially moving it up to moderate in the next couple weeks, just depending on the conditions that we see, um, how consistent the hot temperature is. We've had some winds lately, so mm -hmm. all of those are key factors. Okay, and that's and that's based on the moisture. I think we, we did a story recently on like the moisture reading you guys do. We also take okay. a look at relative humidity. That's a big one as well. Okay, interesting. All right, so uh, I'm curious, you guys, uh, obviously, as I mentioned, Jackson, Josephine County, but there's a lot of cities and, and different territories in this. Um, what, what areas do you particularly oversee? I mean, obviously you're not in the city of Medford, uh, ODF, of course. Yeah, so ODF is basically, um, we cover just a lot of the rural lands in this area. We cover um, a lot of rural homeowners. We do protection for them. And uh, it's just something that we work with our, our other local departments. So we mm -hmm. all work together to, to put out preventative messaging, to talk about fire risks. Um, so, you know, a lot of good advice that I can have for people who live in the city or just in rural area is mm -hmm. either talk to your local fire district or call us up uh, and we can talk about the things that you can do to protect your home. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And as you said, though, no burning. No it's prohibited burning. right now. Completely prohibited. Can't have it because you guys just said, you were, at least before we started, you, you guys were out there on a call for an illegal burn this weekend. We were. It, you know, it happens a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people, you know, kind of miss that memo that as soon as we go into fire season, burning is prohibited. It's just so much of an increased risk to start wildfires. And a lot of the calls we've been on lately have been escape burns. Hmm. Okay. What about uh, you guys right now, or I guess, are in the classroom? Uh, we, we saw that last week with a story. Everybody, all the seasonal firefighters are getting trained up and, and getting just information thrown at them right now. I imagine that's a lot of work. It is. Yeah, we just got all of our seasonal firefighters back last week. Uh, they've been uh, about halfway through a two-week course mm. to become certified. It's something that actually all of our firefighters have to go through every year um, just to make sure they're up on all the safety measures, everything, and they're ready to go. And after this next week, they will be ready to be out in the field and on a fire. Okay, very good. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Much more in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our 5 on 5. Again, we're here with Natalie Weber, our ODF public information officer. So we're, we're talking about seasonal trainings right now for those firefighters are going on. Do you have any idea where your numbers are at this year versus last year? So we're actually about the same as last year. We have 100 seasonal firefighters, 50 in our Grants Pass office and 50 in our Medford office. Okay, and they're, and they're based there as yes, well? Yes, okay. yeah. We do have several guard stations just around both counties and we have units out there um, just in different rural areas, but the majority of our firefighters are based at our headquarters. Okay, and I'm curious, you know, when, when it comes to uh, obviously fires you know there's there's so many different agencies that respond you, you talked about this early in part one whether it's city and rural and all these different agencies u.s forest service even how do you guys kind of set up uh, those partnerships if you will because i imagine when it comes to resources there is some crossover there absolutely yeah we work very closely with the u.s forest service and just all of our rural districts a great example would be the i-5 mile post 70 fire that we had last friday mm -hmm. uh, we had so many different agencies out there besides odf we had blm we had u.s forest service helicopters uh, rural Metro, Grants Pass, Wolf Creek. Wow. You know, so we all really come together when, when we have fires in these areas that are, you know, either overlapping in districts or they're really close. And, you know, if they have resources, they send it. If we have resources, we send them. Hmm. And I know your Jackson County office is right near the airport. Um, do you work with the U.S. Forest Service when it comes to resources? Like, I know they have access to tankers, um, yes. you know, when it comes to helicopters, those types of things. Yeah, so our tanker base in Medford is actually an interagency tanker base. So ODF and the U.S. Forest Service share it. Um, and that's something that we just coordinate with them on. And we, you know, both have our, our different uh, managers, but we work sure. very closely together, especially when we have incidents that are either overlapping or the same. 
Okay, and we talked about, again, burning prohibited in Jackson, Josephine County, just all summer right now. Yeah. It is fire season. We have begun. What should people do if they see smoke? I mean, is, there's literally no no reason they should there should be smoke coming from anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's something that we want to know about. Uh, we can only send resources to it if we know about it. So if you see something, call it in, you know, from anything from an escape burn to a fire on the side of I-5. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to know about it so we can get there and, and put it out. Our goal is to keep at least 95% of our fires under 10 acres, so. Yeah, that would be a wonderful thing. Good <laughs> to see you, thanks very much. Thank you. Right. Stay with us, we'll be right back.